Human behavior has always been a mystery. Why do people do what they do? Why do they react one way when we expected something else? How do we learn to understand, connect with, enroll, engage, align with people most effectively? Hi, I'm Christine Cummerford, founder of Smart Tribes Institute, and welcome to our Smart Tribes Crack the Behavior Code podcast. In each episode, you'll learn practical, easy to use tools to better understand and change human behavior. These tools will help your team outperform, out engage, outsell the competition. In other words, to become a smart tribe. Oh, and you'll find these tools super helpful in your personal life too. Let's go. Once you reach your 40s or possibly earlier, you're likely to have experienced a profound personal hardship and had to navigate it while keeping your job. Now, whether it's the death of a loved one, a divorce, a life-threatening disease, a significant injury or something else, personal hardship takes its toll on us. So here are some tips to help you care for yourself and others when these twists and turns of life occur. Check in with yourself. The emotion wheel, see the show page, is a helpful tool to get you in touch with how you're feeling. Give yourself the gift of being honest when others ask you how you are. So when my father passed away and people asked how I was, I'd say, I'm really sad, you know, or whatever was true. Then I'd notice that people would either try to <laughs> talk me into feeling better, don't do this, let a person feel what they feel, or they would change the topic because they were uncomfortable around my honesty around emotions, or best case, they would meet me where I was with compassion, with kindness, and just say, wow, I'm sorry, or wow, that sounds hard. You know, that feels best. When you're going through a hardship, your job is to feel and process it, not fake it to make others feel better. That approach will only suppress the grief and lengthen the healing process. Ask for help. Next tool. Yes, many of us have been taught that it's a sign of weakness or vulnerability, which is supposedly bad, but it couldn't be farther from the truth. People want to help you. It feels good. And when they are asked for help, it lights up the reward center in their brain and is deeply fulfilling to them. You can see all sorts of evidence in this of the work in the work of Naomi Eisenberger of UCLA, the pain network and the reward network. So asking for help is actually generous to others, as well as to yourself. Saying you can't do something honors your organismic rights to exist and to have needs. It took me a while to let myself reach out to others, and it amazed me how eager people are to help you and how deeply satisfying it is for them. Pad your schedule. When you're in the middle of a personal crisis or a profound hardship, you're not fully present. Part of you is processing the trauma, the grief, the shock of the experience. And based on the degree of intensity, the part of you that's temporarily away could be a huge part. When my stepson died and it wasn't expected, it was just like alive one day, dead the next. It was really shocking. So a large part of me was preoccupied with deep, deep grieving for many, many months. This young, 21-year-old, amazing young man, gone. So I worked less. I added two to three times wiggle room, padding, if you will, to all my deadlines. And I just gave myself the space to feel, and yep, some days I wasn't as productive. Next, get into nature. There's nothing like nature to be life-affirming, especially when we need to remember beauty, grace and the peace of stillness. Even a 30 minute walk in the trees or a park can bring you peace. Ideally, you'll be surrounded by quiet and forest. Not a lot of people, just do what you can though. Meditate, learning to cultivate that internal peace and quiet provides you with a sanctuary you can always retreat to, your internal sanctuary. And as I've mentioned many times, only five minutes of meditation, that's okay. That's a great start to train your mind that your mind is not in charge. 
your higher self, which witnesses the constant barrage of thoughts, should be in charge. Think of it this way. Prayer is speaking and meditation is listening. Watch movies that help you feel. You may need to laugh and lighten up. You may need to cry and let it all hang out. An executive coaching client of mine once told me that he didn't cry. It wasn't something he did. Then a personal hardship occurred in his life and he needed to cry. He needed the release, but he wouldn't let himself. So he was squishing down all that grief and that suppressed sorrow became anger. And I urged him to watch one of a variety of movies that would help him cry. Finally, he agreed to, and he cried for several hours. That's how much was stuck in him. He finally let it all out, and he's been a much different, kinder, gentler, more connected person since. Honor the process. Healing from a personal hardship will take different amounts of time for different people. Honor your and their process without setting expectations and deadlines. Like, hey, aren't you done grieving yet? Okay, not cool. <laughs> Don't do that ever. Seasons take time, so does healing. Chill. Enjoy the process. Let it unfold. Gather the wisdom from it because later you'll look back on it as a transformative time. So what's the summary? Sooner or later, we all have to navigate our work while moving through personal hardship, asking others for help, giving yourself internal and external space, getting into nature, help a great deal. Are you navigating a personal hardship right now? If so, what's helping you? Do you wanna strengthen your ability to navigate through anything? If so, you might wanna check out our retreat, beyondyourbrain.com. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for joining me on this episode. Every listen, every share, every review helps others form their own smart tribes where teams are engaged, happy, and optimally performing. Together, you and I can help millions of people crack the behavior code in their organizations, families, and communities. I invite you to take two minutes and head over to smarttribesinstitute.com to discover more about how to form a smart tribe. See you there, and please tell your friends.